And the tower gets closer. Here are 19 reasons to read Song of Susanna. Hi everyone, welcome to my... Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Dave Masson, at Dave Masson on Instagram, and this is the place where I'm taking you through the works of Stephen King and giving you 19 reasons to read every single one of his books as we go along. If that sounds like something you'd like more of, do click around the rest of my channel, have a look, see what else has have a look, see what else I've covered, and if you like what you see, maybe click subscribe as well so you don't miss any so you don't miss any videos in the future. I cannot talk today. What is going on? Haven't even seen any tractors go past yet. Tractor. In this video, we are heading towards the finale of the Dark Tower saga, and we're covering the first of two books published in 2004, Song of Susanna, the sixth book in the Dark Tower epic, and the penultimate one in the tale of Roland and his quartet. In this video, I'm gonna give you 19 reasons to read this one, and as I try and do nowadays, I'm clustering all the spoilers towards the end of the video and giving you fair warning before they come in. Although I will give you some pre-warning to that warning, there is not a lot in this list that is gonna be before the spoiler warning. This book, well, a lot happens, and if I'm gonna go into the reasons to read it, then a lot of those are gonna be spoilers, so. Apologies in advance, but I'll do what I can to convince you without giving the good stuff away. Sound like a plan? Okay, let's do it. So this is the penultimate book in the Dark Tower run, and it quite literally picks up where Wolves of the Cala left off, which I can't talk about here because spoilers and all that. But it did see King break this tradition he'd sort of set himself of leaving literal years between Dark Tower books. I guess almost being killed kind of had that nudge for him to really just get on and finish this thing, right? The book's subtitle is Reproduction because, well, that lingering pregnancy of Susanna's, that needs to be resolved. In terms of the story itself in this one, this book is probably the quickest of all of the Dark Tower books in the entire series, as this just takes place over the course of about 24 hours. It is bang, bang, bang. Of course, it should be said that those 24 hours do take place in other worlds, other wares, and other whens. This is the Dark Tower after all. Now I often see this one put at the bottom of people's lists when they are ranking their overall Dark Tower experience, and in many ways I can understand that. It is very plot heavy, it is very bang 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 as I said a couple of points ago, and it does really just serve as a point of teeing up the finale of the series. All that being said, I had a great time reading this book both times I've gone through it, and I had a better time reading this book than I did reading Wars of the Cala, and, hmm, you know, I actually enjoyed this one more than Wizard and Glass, which, as I've said in my video about Wizard and Glass, I accept, fully, fully accept, is a quite wonderful book, but it just doesn't do that much for me. This book is where we learn about the Dixie Pig restaurant, which is one of the iconic Dark Tower locations. Now, I can't talk about it much more at this point in the video, just say to say the scenes there are excellent. But lastly, before we get to spoilers, told you it wouldn't take long, most of this book actually takes place in our world, and that, for me, is where the Dark Tower is at its strongest. I love seeing Roland and his gang fucking shit up in places that we know. Okay, quite possibly the earliest I've said this in any one of my videos, but we are entering spoiler territory, so if you need to dip out here, do so with my blessing and come back soon. Okay then, let's pick up with some of the cool stuff going on there. First of all, the problem of Susanna buggering off to New York and closing the door behind her so Roland and the gang can't catch up with her and make sure she is safe. Massive problem, right? Well, not such a big problem when Roland is around, who happens to know the Manny, the local magical folk outside the Cala, and he's able to convince them to reopen the doorway a couple more times so he and his gang can go through. So when they open the doors, we have two journeys starting. We have Jake and Callahan going to 1999 New York to try and track down Susanna Mir, and we have Roland and Eddie going to 1970, going to 1977 Maine to try and track down Calvin Tower to try and secure a piece of land. Bang! Straight away, two concurrent missions on the go. Of course, that's not how it was supposed to pan out. Those two groups were meant to be doing the opposite things and going to the opposite where's and when's, but they get sucked into the doors at the wrong time. Bang! Instant bang! Bang! 
immediate danger, immediate problems. So in 1999, you knew, cannot speak today. So in 1999, New York, Susanna Mir hangs out in a hotel for a bit before being told that she needs to head to the Dixie Pig restaurant, which I told you about earlier. Now, the Dixie Pig restaurant is important because it is full of vampires, it is full of Cantoy, and, and it is a secret entrance back into Midworld. It is one fucked up place. So at that Dixie Pig restaurant, Susanna is taken through that door to Fedic, which is a town just outside Thunderclap in Midworld, and she and Mia are separated so Mia can go off and prepare to give birth to her horrible demon child. So that horrible demon child is not only the child of the Crimson King, but also the child of Roland and Susanna. How does that work? Well, stick with me. Remember in The Gunslinger when Roland has sex with a demon to stop the demon having sex with Jake? Yep, remember that? Well, that demon took Roland's um, seed during that incident. And then when Susanna has sex with the demon, when they're trying to bring back Jake into Midworld in the Wastelands, well, that demon has Roland's seed in it and, well, impregnates Susanna with it. Keeping up? Yeah, it's a bit strange. So back in 1977, Maine, and literally the moment Roland and Eddie drop in, they are in the middle of an ambush set up by the gangster Jack Andalini, who we meet earlier in the series, who has been tipped off by Mia all about it. Straight away, gunfight, and it's a lot of fun. So Roland and Eddie are actually helped and saved by a local Mainer named John Cullum, who they then get to take them to Turtleback Lane to meet one special character, an author called Stephen King. Yep, Stephen King quite literally writes himself into the Dark Tower story in this book, and it all gets a bit meta and, for honest, a bit messy. So Roland initially thinks that King could be some sort of god, but then hypnotizes him with his weird bullet trick and learns that he's actually just a conduit of stories. And the resolution of that is basically Roland kicking Stephen King up the ass and saying, get on with it and finish these damn Dark Tower books. We also learn that King's mere existence and him writing these books is causing walk-ins, people, creatures, strange beings from Midworld drifting through a gap in reality through to our world. Yeah, just go with it, okay? So in New York 1999, Jake and Callahan quite literally land in the middle of the road and Oi is nearly run over by a taxi. Jake reacts very rationally and maturely to this by almost shooting the taxi driver before Callahan is able to talk him down. Anyway, they eventually track down the hotel Susanna has been staying in and they find Black 13, that magical mystical orb that Susanna had used to get to New York. This doesn't exactly go very well though because Black 13's evil powers make it so that Callahan and Jake almost kill each other. That was a strange noise I made, wasn't it? Lots of outtakes this week. Thankfully, Callahan is able to restore his faith and overpower Black 13. Jake and Callahan then decide to hide Black 13 in a locker at the bottom of the World Trade Center in 1999. We do get another cliffhanger ending. Jake and Callahan track Susanna's progress down to the Dixie Pig restaurant and they're standing outside the restaurant and they both have serious do not go in here if you wish to continue living vibes when they're outside. So what do they do? Naturally, they raise their weapons and they go in. So as an interesting postscript to this, we get a diary of the fictional character of Stephen King charting his progress through his career talking about publishing the Dark Tower books and some of his other big hitters as well. Now that diary ends with references to Stephen King dying on the 19th of June, 1999, the very date that he, in real life, was knocked down by a minivan driver. It truly is the point in the book where King and the Dark Tower become so interwoven that you just don't know what's real and what's fiction. So there we go, 19 reasons, mainly spoilers, to read Song of Susanna. Do let me know if you like this one, and let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like a few more servings of this kind of thing, well, there's loads more to explore on my channel. Do click around, go and see what you can find, maybe click subscribe if you like it that much. There's also a complete guide to the Dark Tower, and of course, next week, we'll be hitting book seven, the finale of the series, so do check back for that as well. And if you wanna come and chat Dark Tower or anything Stephen King on Instagram, 
I'm at Dave Musson, always happy to talk in my DMs. As I just mentioned, next time we will be reaching the finale of the Dark Tower series. So it will be another 19 reasons that are nearly all spoilers, but come back anyway, because we've come this far, we may as well wrap it up. Yeah? Okay, take care and I will see you soon.